Well, hey there, everyone. I'm Daniel Hahn, and I'm the online campus pastor here at Oxford Assembly of God Church, and this is our podcast. And I just want to thank you for listening today. We hope the message you're about to hear inspires you, builds your faith, and helps you see that God has a purpose for your life. And now, let's get into the message. Do any of you older folks, now some of you younger folks might know this, but you remember singing that song, I'm Redeemed? That was a very popular phrase in years gone by. Some may say it's old fashioned, that's no longer applicable. But church, I'm glad to tell you today that I have been redeemed. I've been bought back. The ransom price has been paid. Satan has no hold on me because my kinsman redeemer has paid my ransom. Amen. And so redeemed how I love to proclaim it. I've been redeemed. Look what the psalmist had to say about being redeemed in Psalm 49. Psalm 49, reading of verse 5. Why should I fear in times of trouble? When the iniquity of those who cheat me surrounds me, those who trust in their wealth and boast of their abundance of their riches, truly no man can ransom another. You know, it doesn't matter how much money you have, you could not ransom us from sin. You didn't have that much money. But we cannot give to God the price of his life. For the ransom of their life is costly and can never suffice. That he should live forever and never see the pit. Drop down to verse 14. Like sheep, they're all appointed for Sheol. Now that's another word for hell. They're all appointed. Now folks, whether we know it or not, we're going to spend eternity somewhere. I said, we're going to spend eternity somewhere because God made us eternal beings. So when you leave this life, it's not over. It's appointed for man once to die and after that, the judgment. So you are going to spend eternity somewhere. Like sheep, they're appointed for Sheol. Death shall be their shepherd and the uprout shall rule over them in the morning. This form shall be consumed in Sheol with no place to dwell. But God, Oh, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? But God, but God will ransom my soul from the power of Sheol for he will receive me. How can he say that? Because we have been redeemed. We've been redeemed. Now I know that that's not a, a word that we use a lot, but the Bible is full of it. Let's go to Ephesians chapter one, Ephesians chapter one, and notice what it says. Begin reading at verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Every spiritual blessing, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to, for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that you can be adopted into the family? I want to tell you what, I, I was thinking the other day, you know, I've, I've handled a, quite a few estates but I haven't ever inherited a whole lot. But you know what? I've got more than I'll ever need because I've been redeemed. I've been declared a son of God and I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. So guess what? I don't need a whole lot in this world because I've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. So I'm glad to proclaim it. He pressed predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption. There's that word redemption. We've been redeemed through his blood and forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fulfillment of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth, 
In him, we have attained an inheritance. Oh, I'm glad I got an inheritance. I'm glad I've got an inheritance. In him, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to him the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Wow. Man, it's awesome to know that we have been redeemed. Now, there are several words that are translated redeemed or redemption. The words literally means to buy back. It means to release on receipt of ransom. It means deliverance. That's what those words mean. There's several uh, Greek and Hebrew words that talks about us being redeemed, but it literally means for we've been bought back. We've been bought back. It means to release on receipt of ransom. I want to tell you what, if somebody kidnapped me and said, Marcia, you can have him back for a million dollars, she'd probably say, you can keep him. <laughs> and even if she wanted to, we couldn't raise a million dollars. But you know what? My ransom's already been paid. My ransom and your ransom has already been paid through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, then we ask, well, where does that word kinsman redeemer come in? Well, the kinsman redeemer, the word kinsman is also related to ransom. When you see the word kinsman, it's tied together with a ransom. It means an obligation arising out of that relationship. Now, I don't know if you saw all of that where it talked about an inheritance, but when we become in Christ, we have a relationship with him. We have a relationship with him, and when he died on the cross, he paid for all of our ransom. All of it. And because of that relationship, we become a child of God, a joint heir of Jesus Christ. I know that Lee mentioned it earlier, you know, when we come to God. And I think of an adoption agency or maybe uh, these adopting of pets. You know, you see pictures and maybe you've bent down to the uh, a place where they're adopting out cat, uh, dogs and they're jumping, they're barking and you, you get your choice of which one you want. I'm glad God said, I'll take them all. Amen. I'll take them all. Back a, just a few weeks ago, uh, my wife had a, a major thing and I'm, I think I may have mentioned this, but her dog died Saturday to Friday and her cat died suddenly on, on Saturday. And it just so happened that Robbie was driving down the road Friday night and almost run over a, a coon. And as he stopped for the coon, he saw the eyes of something. And I want to tell you that something was the ugliest kitten you've ever seen in your life. It uh, I mean, it was the, my wife carried it to the vet and the doctor said it would not have lived through the night. It, it was sick. It was frail. It was ugly. But you know what? Said my wife didn't have a dog or a cat. Guess what she did? She says it's mine. And she ransomed it and we're still paying the vet bills. But it's hers. And I'm going to tell you what. I've never seen a cat do this. He literally gets a running start, runs up your legs, and sits on your shoulder. I want to drop kick him through the goalposts of life. <laughs> but he's been ransomed. He's been ransomed. But now, early in the morning, you know, if he, when he's been so mean, you might could buy him. Just say it. But he's been ransomed. He's been redeemed. 
Now, the word redeemed, one of the first uses is when Moses was writing the book of Genesis and when Jacob blessed his children. Look what it says in Genesis chapter 48. And he blessed Joseph and said, the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil. Aren't you glad he redeemed you from all of it, not just part of it? All evil. Bless the boys and in them let my name be carried on and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. He gave redemption. Now God over in the next book in Genesis, uh, excuse me, Exodus chapter 6, he promised redemption. In uh, Exodus chapter 6 verse 5. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel. This is God speaking. He said, I heard the groaning of my people Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will deliver you from slavery to them and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. He says, listen, I heard you cry. I heard you meowing. I've heard you barking. I've heard you crowing. And I hear you and I'm going to redeem you. And he goes on to say, I will take you to my people and I will be your God who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. In other words, you're enslaved. You're in bondage to these Egyptians. You're a slave and you have no hope because you've got no way out. But guess what? I've redeemed you. I'm redeemed. I love to proclaim it because God is almighty. God is all powerful. He has redeemed us through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When John the Baptist was born or when uh, Zachariah, his dad prophesied in the beginning of the New Testament, he said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel for he has visited and redeemed his people. Now that's before Jesus was born. He said he has blessed and redeemed his people. Now the greatest picture of redemption we have in the Bible is in that little book of Ruth. Little book of Ruth. And the words redeem, redemption, or a form of that are found 23 times in those four chapters. 23 times in a small book and in that book, we find several comparisons. It compares life and what? Death. It compares toil and rest. It compares pleasantness and bitterness. It compares empty and full. All of those are comparisons that are recorded there in that little book of Ruth. It takes place during the judges. Famine hit Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread. And Elamech and his wife and two sons left Bethlehem, the house of bread, and went to Moab. They went to Moab. The husband and two sons die. Now, I'm not even going to take time to read, but just a few verses of Ruth. But I would encourage you to please read it. It's an awesome story. A story of redemption. A story of love. A story of rescue. But Naomi went down to Moab with two sons and a husband. The two sons got married. But the two sons and husband died. And here she was left with two daughters, or daughter-in-laws. And we know that Ruth returned to Bethlehem with Naomi. One of the girls stayed back. Now, 
what I'm about to share with you really has nothing to do or very little to do with my message this morning. But I feel some of you need this little nugget. Naomi means pleasantness or delight. Wouldn't it be nice to have a name? There comes Miss Pleasant. There comes Miss Nice. That was her name, and she had a personality to go along with it. But when she returned home, she had left full, and she came home empty, and she said, don't you call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara, which means bitterness. Naomi felt bitter. She had anger in her life. She had hurt. She was filled with despair because she didn't have any way of making money. And she had a daughter-in-law to feed. And so you can understand how she felt. And she said, don't call me Naomi. Don't call me Miss Pleasant. Call me bitter. Call me bitter. If you read that book, just those four chapters, you'll find that no one ever called her Mara. But she felt bitter. She felt angry. And I was prompted to address some people today that you feel better, bitter. You're hurt. You're angry. You may have a right to be. You just feel it. But can I remind you that God really is not controlled by our feelings? It's all about faith. It's all about faith. And so she said, Call me bitter. But I want to read just a few verses at the closing of that book. Chapter 4, verse 13. After Boaz, the kinsman redeemer, had redeemed them, it says, So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Yeah, the same one that was bitter, same one that's anger. The same one that felt like she had been defeated. The same one that had those bad feelings. They said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a redeemer. I don't care how you feel. Let me rephrase that. I do care how you feel. It does not matter how you feel. We've got a redeemer that's paid the price for your ransom. He's paid the price for your redemption. And he said, Boaz has not left you this day without a redeemer. And may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you is more to you than seven sons has given birth to him. Guess what, Naomi? Guess what, my sweetness? Good, guess what, pleasantness? You've got a grandson. And he has restored to you. And he's more important. Now, any of you got grandkids, you, you love your kids, but you know, if you'd have known grandkids were this much fun, you'd had them first, right? It's been restored. Then Naomi took the child and laid her on her lap and became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name saying, a son has been born to Naomi. How many knows it was not Naomi's son, it was her grandson. But God had ransomed her. They named him Obed. He was a father of Jesse, the father of David. See, not only had God redeemed you, he can restore your joy. 
I said, not only does he redeem you, he can restore your joy. Now, Naomi, we can understand her bitterness. We can understand her heartbreak. We can understand her loss. She had lost her two sons. But God says, listen, I'm redeemed you. I'm restoring you. Now, so what do you do about getting that joy? Well, let's look and see what the psalmist had to say. Psalm 4, verse 1. Answer me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have given me relief. When I was in distress... Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. O oh, men, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lives? But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. What? You've been redeemed. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your hearts on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. She had left uh, uh, Bethlehem, the house of bread, because of famine, went to Moab and went through some dark and dismal times. She came back. She said, call me Miss Bitter. And God said, there's no way. I'm going to restore, I'm going to restore what you have lost. But know that the Lord has restored. There are many who say, who will show us some good? Let the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Wow. Yeah, I know some people going through some rough times. And you may feel bitter. May have been forsaken. Feel like God's not there. But it kind of, kind of remind, remind you that the kinsman redeemer, he knows what you're going through. Now let's go back to Ruth. And again, I want you to read this entire book today. Don't put it off. Read it today. Not now, but today. I have enough trouble keeping some of your attention when you're focused. <laughs> but read how Boaz, who was kin, he wasn't the next of kin. He had to make sure they got one of them out of the way so he could become their kinsman redeemer. He stepped in. Now, how many knows that he really wasn't concerned about Naomi? Huh? That's right. He was concerned about Ruth. Yeah. Because up to then he'd been ruthless. <laughs> that just came to me. That's good, wasn't it? <laughs> but Boaz, he said, in order to redeem Ruth, he had to redeem Naomi. Because yeah. guess what? Ruth wasn't even a Jew. Now, I know you can trace the Moabs because that was of, of, of Lot's family. But she was considered a foreigner. So he had to redeem, redeem his mother-in-law. And he paid the ransom for her. We don't know how much the ransom was. It was the value of whatever that property was that he had to redeem. He had the chance and he had to pay market value. And he said, I will redeem it. I'm going to pay their ransom. He stepped in and redeemed not only Ruth, but Naomi. He paid the price. He paid the ransom and they became what? They became free. But we need to also note that this son Obed became the grandfather of David who through David's lineage Jesus was born and that was the reason that David excuse me Mary and Joseph had to go to Bethlehem because that's where the house of bread was that's where David came from and they had to go to Bethlehem for Jesus to be born why because Jesus was going to be your redeemer going to be my redeemer and he was going to pay it all for us 
the Redeemer of all mankind, was born in the city of David. Now, we already read some in Ephesians, but I want to go back to Ephesians chapter 2. And I want you to notice something about the fullness of this redemption. The fullness of this redemption. And see how it relates really how the story of Ruth and Naomi. And you were dead in your trespasses. They didn't have anything until they were redeemed. They had nothing. You were dead in their trespasses and sin in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that has now worked at the sons of disobedience, of whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of life, like the rest of mankind. Here's that word again, but. God, but God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, <clears throat> made us alive together with Christ by grace have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace have you been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is a gift of God. You could not purchase your ransom. You don't have that much money. You don't have that much power. That someone that had the ability to pay the ransom of all creation, there was no one that could pay the ransom. That's the reason Jesus came to the earth. So that he could be our ransom. And it's not of our works. It's the gift of God that says, I'm paying your ransom. Not a result of works so that no man could boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles, now who was, who was Paul talking to? He was talking about to the Ephesians. Naomi was a Gentile. She was not considered a, a Jew. The uncircumcision, by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ. But you've been redeemed. You were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, but you've been redeemed. You were strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but you've been redeemed. But now in Christ Jesus, you were once were far off, have been bought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has been made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create himself one new man in place of the two. So making peace and might reconcile us. Now, another word for reconcile is redeem, but it also means to pay off what is owed. Reconcile the books. I'm going to tell you something. Every one of us had a debt that we couldn't pay. We had a debt we couldn't pay. The ransom was more than we could ever raise if we worked all of our lives. We could never raise the ransom. We could never raise the ransom. Thinking about that mom, dad, grandparents. Your son, your daughter, your grandkids being held for ransom. And you know that regardless of what you did, it was not good enough. But Jesus redeemed us. He ransomed us, reconciled us both to God in one body through the cross thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who are near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father so that you're no longer strangers. You've been redeemed. You're no longer aliens. You've been ransomed. But you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the 
chief cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. So together we've been redeemed and we're growing as a holy temple in the Lord. Why? Because we're all part of the body of Christ. Why? Because we've been redeemed in whom you're also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Let's think about it this way. Let's think about redemption this way. Someone kidnaps you. They mistreat you. They abuse you over and over and over again. And someone tells you the ransom's been paid. You can go free. You've been redeemed. And you look at your captors. You see the hate. The hurt, the shame, the gloom, the doom. And yet you say, I think I will stay in captivity. You say, Pastor, that's dumb. Nobody would be that foolish. I want you to know something. Satan never intends any good for you. He's a liar. And he will promise the world, but he'll never deliver. And if you are serving him, you say, wait, I never signed up to serve Satan. You don't sign up to serve Satan. We're born into sin. And that's the reason Jesus said, I've got to pay the ransom. And it was a costly ransom, the blood of Christ. He said, but I've paid it so that You don't have to pay it. You don't have to work for it. You just have to walk out of bondage into freedom just like Ruth did. Now she did everything she could do. The best she could be was to be a beggar the rest of her life. But she was redeemed. She was redeemed. She was ransomed. And I know some of you say, well, pastor, everybody understands and knows that. But even in Jesus' day, guess what they said? He came into his own, and his own did not receive him. His own rejected him, even though he came to pay the ransom. So today, if you're like Naomi... You're bitter and angry, frustrated. Can I remind you to let God take care of that bitterness and anger and frustration because he's already paid the price. And if you're a non-believer today, Satan has nothing good planned for you. But we have a good, good father. We have a good, good father. And he loved you so much. He said, I'm sending my son, Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us to be the ransom so that you can be free. Worship team, come on up. Heavenly Father, I ask you to minister by your power and your strength. God, if there are those that are bitter and angry today, and maybe they have a reason to be, we know there's a lot of hatred in this world. But God, we know that you have this ability to restore to us the joy of our salvation. So we ask, Lord, that if there's anyone that's been hurt, anyone that feels like they're never good enough, Let them know, let them know, let them know that their guilt has been paid for, that they've been ransomed, that they've been set free. And God, if there are those here today, and maybe they don't even understand everything what I've talked about, they just know, they just know that they're miserable. And they can never pay for 
what they've done. But you've paid the price for them. So, Father, minister by your power. We're going to sing an old hymn of the church. And if you're here today and you'd like to accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, someone will meet you here at the altar. If you're here today and you just want to come out of bondage, you say, yes, Pastor, I'm, I'm already a Christian, but I want to get rid of my bitterness. I want to get rid of my anger. I want to get rid of that hatred that's in me. I want to be and feel the redemption. On behalf of our pastor and staff here at OAG, we want to say thank you. Thank you for being a part of our ministry. We are grateful for you and the support you give our church and its ministries so that we can continue to do what God has called us to do to be the family church for the family of God. For more content from Pastor Strickland and Oxford Assembly of God, check out our media website at oag.church/media.